and thanks to us at Rose Anvil for sponsoring this video because it is increasingly hard to get sponsors for these videos and they try to just get you as cheap as possible to a point where we're having to change a little bit of our business structure. So that's why we're showing you some of the handmade stuff that we're making here in the shop because this is what started all of this. The reason I know so much about leather is because I started this leather working business where we make these hand sewn wallets, no sewing machines, vegetable tan leather. We've got this micro adjust belt I think people are sleeping on because it's that common problem with belts where one hole's too tight, one's too loose. This little adjustment on the back, this micro adjust, gets you the ability to split the difference. So if it's that Goldilocks zones right between two holes, this allows you to do that. And finally, our lasso link neck strap that's super short for this video, but this is a little, uh, this, is a, this is our new camera strap that's still in the first batch prototyping phase, so it's still a little bit cheaper than the final product. So check them out before the price goes up and check them out below. Thanks again to Rose Ample. Just because your, your brand's so interesting and it's so, because probably to you it feels like, oh, this is just what we do, like this is my everyday life. But like to me, I'm like, I'm so fascinated by everything you guys are doing. You're, you're from a, literally the other side of the world. Your culture is so different. Like the boots that you make are so different. And so to me, like the, the, the stuff that you might think are all these boring stories, like I think to everyone else, you're going to be like, whoa, that's yeah. crazy. Yeah, sometimes I actually have to say that to myself. You know, yeah. I'm speaking to people that are unfamiliar with the brand, you're just like, Guys, don't you know this stuff? Yeah. When actually you got to take a step back and start from the beginning. Right. Like, this is where we come from. This is how we manufacture. This is you know, how we run our factory. This is why this boot is this boot. And, right. Um, and then once the guys start to understand all that, the whole, you know, the whole puzzle starts to come together. Yeah. So, so yeah, I think attending the that trade show now is very important because you actually get to interact with your guests face right. to face rather than, not, not your guests, your customers. and and see what you know what they have to say about the boots and what was quite uh, nice from this trade show is that there were so many guys who are really wearing our boots coming past and just saying really really great boots and oh love cool them. and so that's always a good nice. feeling you know because you sometimes you're just like well i hope these are working and people like them and then when you actually see someone it it makes a difference yeah well that, that's something we were just talking about in the previous bit of recording we were doing was like this this boot that we designed together w with the Jim Green African Rangers barefoot version. This was like not some master plan that we con concocted. You flew out last year for outdoor retailer a show here in Salt Lake. And you're like, hey, I'm in town. Let's go, like, let's go get some dinner. Let's talk and let's hang out. So we went over to the outdoor retailer at the big expo, came around, hung out with you, chatted a little bit, and like went around, did some other stuff, and then we went to dinner afterwards, and we were just talking. We're like, it'd be cool to do a collaboration, like. You know, this whole like barefoot thing is popping off and like you already are halfway there with the wide toe box. Like we, we could totally do like a barefoot boot. And like both of us were like not actually like in the series, like business meeting negotiating yeah. back and forth. We're just like, you know, hanging out, eating some food and drinking. And this idea kind of came up. And then over the course of the next few months, it, it just kind of happened. You're like, hey, we should do this. Hey, what would this outsole look like? You should design a little pattern for the outsole. Hey, what would the sole construction look like? And then we just kind of like, there was intent behind designing it, but it just kind of came together all from us meeting face to face and be like, oh yeah, we're like, we're homies. We get along, let's, like, let's, let's work together. Let's do some cool stuff. Yeah, exactly. I think if we could take one word out of the, from the, those few drinks that we had, it was it, uh, minimalist. And I think minimalist naturally relates to barefoot. Yeah. And then I think you, yeah, you, I think you sent me an email. You're like, hey, guys, you know, your African range is already kind of halfway there. Let's just rather, you know, rather than reinvent the wheel, let's rather just make some minor adjustments. Yeah. And I think it's just been really, really well received. I think, well, I mean, I'm surprised myself how just great the boot is. Right. Like all the, every boot that we make, I always wear for a couple of weeks, if not months. Mm -hmm. And I, Never ever before this the African Ranger barefoot worn a barefoot shoe. Okay. I've always worn worn Jim Greens my whole life, um. So naturally my feet have spread out a little bit, being right. a, of a wider fit. So I put on the barefoot, one of the first few samples, and it must have been like maybe six weeks later, I took them off and put on a, another pair of Jim Greens, and I was like, whoa. Oh really? <laughs> it was like yeah, I was like this actually, you know, you don't you don't know. You know, going from a normal pair of Jim Greens to barefoot, it feels a little bit different at first. But going from barefoot back to something with a heel and a steel shank, mm. that's when you really notice the big change. And since then, obviously, it's our summer back home now. So I've only been wearing 
uh, African Ranger barefoot boots. Oh, wow. And then, uh, yeah, I've obviously been wearing, while well, wearing these, uh, the, our latest Numzan boots here in America. Yeah, throw those up here. Give yeah. a little plug of those. Put your foot on that. <laughs> well, get a little shoe model. Yeah, look at that. So what, what are, the, explain those to the people that maybe don't know. This is quite a, yeah, you know, we've been developing this boot for probably a good seven or eight months. So what we actually did, so many guys were enjoying our boots and they wanted something a little bit more formal and for the office and lots of guys saying, uh, you know, to go full leather midsole. What we actually did is we uh, we bought in a, a, a Vibram sole. We, because we don't get Vibram in South Africa. There's no distributors here. So okay. we had to buy one sole from here in America. Plus we bought some uh, Chrome XL uh, leather okay. and brown. And we're like, okay, we're gonna make the best boot <laughs> that we can. Yeah. Let's go and source the best materials. So uh, let's get a branded uh, sole, a well-known leather, and let's see what we can put together. So we put uh, that boot together. Uh, lots of guys were wanting the toe cap, put that on, and then obviously just with importing the materials, we get charged 30% import duty. Oh my gosh. So the really the boot, first of all, the materials are very expensive. Then you get hit with the import duty. And then to export them back to America oh, just right. didn't make much sense. So what we did is that we're like, okay, let's just stick to what, what we do. And uh, like we'd like to source all our materials locally. So we took the leather and the sole and we're like, okay, let's chat with our suppliers. And we've developed a veg tan leather upper. And we've also come out with this new sole called uh, Frog. We call it our Frog Grip Sole. <laughs> so it's just something a little bit more formal. Uh, and yeah, a couple of the guys who who really got some of these boots are really enjoying it so far. It's only they're been pretty on slick. Feet. They look yeah, good. They're looking good. I mean, I've been tromping uh, around in the snow for a bit, and yeah, right. They seem to be doing doing nasty. Yeah, but one of the, the the good things to come from us developing this leather is that we are going to be running it on the on the barefoot boots okay. as well. So is it a full veg tan or is it a veg retan? It's a veg retan. Okay. Yeah. So, so they do they, a quick chrome tan first, then they like resaturate it and retan it with like vegetable tanning compounds, right? Yeah. So they take a wet blue, which is a chrome tanned leather, right? And then what they do is they use the veg extracts, veg extracts to then retan it, and then they put like a, a heated, uh, with like a metal sheet that presses down on it, and that's what gives it this kind of. Oh, okay. uh, shiny look so we've got this it looks the, good yeah so we're gonna have the so the barefoots because of the success of the barefoots yeah. uh, we are going to be running the barefoots in this walnut brown uh, we'll have it in a natural the veg retan as well oh, which cool. is uh, obviously a natural a natural looking leather and then lots of guys have been asking for the barefoots in black mm. and then just for fun we're going to be adding in uh, olive green uh, new back as well that's so, going to look good. Yeah, so I think it's going to be a nice selection of colors and then obviously uh, leathers for the for the barefoot boots as well. And when, because right, I don't know, it depends on when this posts, but like our, you said right before we recorded, you guys have shipped all the pre-orders, right, that, of people that have ordered these from the pre-order that we did? That's correct, yeah. So all it's, the pre-orders are already on feet, uh, plus we sent in a bunch of extra stock. And, you know, obviously it's just been the reviews and feedback from this boot have been unbelievable. Yeah, it's kind of crazy how much they popped off, huh? Because like we even before we released this, both both of us were like, "If this doesn't go well, sorry. Like, let's hope it go. Let's hope yeah, it sells." The next minute, website crashed for forty five. Yeah, minutes. and it just completely blew up. And we've, you know, I think we, I think you mentioned we've sold over a couple thousand of them, right? I think we well over three thousand, probably <laughs> That's so closing crazy. in on, on four thousand pairs. And the cool thing is, like behind all these, is is every pair that gets purchased, it, a portion of it goes towards real African Rangers, right? Exactly, yeah. So we, uh, so for every 10 pairs we sell, we'll donate a pair to a ranger in need. That's so, so cool. Yeah, as, I, as I mentioned a little bit earlier off camera, I said, oh, that's, we've sold so many, so let's put together, you know, a Rose Anvil ranger team. Yeah. You know, maybe get some footage. <sighs> That'd be uh, so cool. See, you know, see what kind of boots they want to wear, and they'll be you know, a very nice little cherry on the top for the whole, for that the would whole be, story. That would be like, one of the more meaningful things that could have ever come from this because the fact that there'd be like some 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 bros out there rolling around and some some boots that i helped design that are like the rose anvil crew like of the south african rangers no exactly. that's so cool yeah. no we can so thank you for doing that, do that. Yeah. that's really cool as you can imagine our life has been quite busy especially yeah. trying to get the the pre-sales off and um tooling up for production 
Yeah, so when we get back now, we're actually doing... Because the problem with these boot donations is that the hardest part is getting these boots to these ranges. You know, these okay. guys are working in some of the, the most remote corners mm. of Africa. So it's quite a logistical nightmare. Uh, so we do it in batches of like 500 at a time okay so that we can sit down you know book all the rates and and get the boots and get the boots off so do you have to deal with any like any form of corruption trying to get free stuff to people in south africa i feel like anytime free stuff gets moved around anywhere there's people like oh i'm gonna get a piece of that i'm gonna try to like like uh, siphon off some of this. south africa is quite uh, easy you know because there's no borders so you, uh, we can just send stuff all over okay uh, but getting stuff into like zimbabwe that's mm. that's probably the trickiest country. Okay. Um, yeah, it's yeah. You, there's there's many ways to try and get them onto the ranges there. But yeah. We've, yeah. That's one of quite a big chunk of the Zim Parks ranges. So for those that have been on safari anywhere, you'll, you'll be aware of there's an area called the Zambezi Valley, one of the most beautiful places in Africa. And we oh, cool. one of our claim to fames last year was that we've actually kitted out every single Zim Parks Ranger in the in a pair of Jim Green boots. That's cool. And the logistics behind that, I won't even go in. That will be a whole other hour-long right. episode on its own. So we, yeah, well, that was one of our claims. And yeah, so looking forward to getting some more boots boots onto Rangers. The thing that's funny too is like, if, the, if you were an American brand, your entire brand would be the fact that you give away one, uh, for every 10 boots sold, one to an African Ranger. Like, it's such an American thing to do. It'd be like, Oh, we're doing something righteous in this way. That's our whole brand, yeah. you know. Whereas you guys, it doesn't really get talked about a whole bunch. I don't think a lot of people even understand that you have this altruistic like side of the business that's actually helping people with the boots that you're making. And I, yeah, I just respect it a lot. Thank you. Yeah, that's actually something I need to get onto because, <laughs> like, you know, we <coughs> thought we'll just kill out a few ranges here and there, and obviously the original African Ranger people really love. Then we got the African Ranger barefoot. Then we got the AR8. So it's all kind of coming together and guys is really loving the boots. Yeah. But I actually need to put some more emphasis onto getting some stories back from the right. ranges and putting it onto our social platforms because, you know, lots of our, our supporters and customers really love to see, you know, the work that some of these guys are doing. Yeah. Um, yeah. So on our, on our YouTube channel, we actually did like a three part documentary now where we, we did all the ranges of Table Mountain National Park. Okay. It was about 180 pairs. Wow. Uh, so we did like a three-part series. We worked with uh, a group of guys called Tick South. They've actually driven Tick Ticks from Kenya to Cape Town. Whoa. It took them like, I think like eight or nine months. And for those that don't know, what it, explain that to them. Uh, a Tick Tick is those like three-wheel Little vehicles. carts. Probably the complete opposite to what you would want <laughs> to you know go across african they're like they're like the little three-wheeled carts with like the they have a little bit of like an overhead cage on them type yeah, of deal pretty yeah pretty much yeah so they they drove those from kenya to cape town raising awareness for rangers so wow. naturally tied in uh they so they've become filmmakers so they've been documenting their whole uh process so they're actually going to start a youtube channel as well so they've got okay. they got months of footage that they just need to that's put, cool that they need to put together um but yeah i'm actually because we've got our our YouTube channel where we do quite well with our stuff from the factory and we're doing really well with uh, the custom-made boots like guys are really loving the custom-made boot department yeah but like just like you did with your you know you got Rose Anvil 2 and Rose Anvil builds we might consider doing like a Jim Green adventures oh, okay yeah that'd be cool because <laughs> we came out with this like three-part series of you know this great it was well put together uh, well, the footage is amazing, and you know it's like our worst performing videos. <laughs> and I'm sure you've been. Dude, that's yeah, how it like, goes every <laughs> time. Anytime you're like, "This is gonna be big. We're gonna put a lot of time and money in this." It always flops. Yeah. And then like the one, the videos you never expect to pop off, they get the most attention, they get the most heat, they get the most like, like comments back and forth, and you're just like, "I spent like an hour on that video. Yeah. I did not think it was gonna get this many views." Exactly. And then you you like spend a month on one video, and it's get like ten thousand views, and you're like, "Oh." Okay. Yeah. Okay. Whatever. Yeah. So when we get back, one of the big, one of the things for this year is definitely going to be our custom-made boots department. Cool. Get some more leathers. You know, we've got a couple soles coming. That yeah. We, that we're playing around with now, and guys are really loving it because, you know, they've got some of them have two, three, up to ten pairs of Jim Greens. Wow. Um, and now they're wanting, you know, something a little bit different, some like little changes here and there. Yeah. Uh, so it's just a nice little addition that, that we're working on at the moment. Well, that, I think that's what you guys do so well, especially with these these boots, because, the, and obviously, like, I help design them, but, like, 
I because really all I did in this for the people that don't know was like I kind of designed the pattern of the outsole like I kind of came up with this pattern and then you guys went to the back to the drawing boards after we saw some issues with the toe and the heel put this patch in we you know I think I was mostly deciding on like the thicknesses of things and, and basically sold down stuff but the uppers already existed with the regular African Ranger and I love this boot like even though I like partially designed it I end up wearing these so much more often than I would with the regular collaboration boot or whatever because they just sit next to my door and when I'm like oh I gotta run to my car or I gotta go over here I go go to the store go get some dinner I have like a couple different pairs of boots I'm like do I want to be uncomfortable do I want to spend five minutes lacing those up do I want to like have my feet sore after 30 minutes if I'm actually standing or do I want to put on my like my gym greens that I that are like the wide toe box my toes aren't gonna be squished that's like soft enough that they are pretty cozy like comfy underneath foot and so I end up wearing these a ton. And that to me is like one of the things that I'm like, oh, this was a good collaboration because if I unintentionally wear these that much, I think we've got something. And so to me, these have been a huge success just personally. It doesn't even matter how much that, how many we've sold or how, how involved I am or aren't. It's just like this little concept that we came up with at a bar when you're out here just for a trade show ended up being one of the most worn boots that I've worn this year. And I love it. You know, it's like one of these boots too, where it's like, you can wear it with just about anything. Like the only thing you like, I don't wear it with is like shorts, but like I'll wear it with like nice pants. I'll wear it with like more casual baggy pants. I'll roll the, the cuffs up. They, they just, I don't know. They're just a really good all around boot. So I, I uh, that's kind of my review yeah. of, of all my experiences thus far. The only thing that like, that causes me some pain is, is just the, the, the natural factor of having a leather sole. It's just a little bit harder than like a, a completely foam based boot. Mm. But the, the cool thing is you can, we, you know, and then me and Taylor are working on a little project for some insoles specifically for uh, this situation where you want just a little bit of extra squish, but you don't necessarily want to get rid of the, of some of the stability and the rigidity. And so almost taking like a little Spinco style insole and putting it in there and going half a size up, which I did in this other boot that we're going to talk about in the next video is like a really good sweet spot for people that want even more wiggle room and a little bit more squish, or you stay true to whatever sizing we've recommended and it fits perfectly as well. I just, yeah, I don't know. I think I think it's just a roundabout way of saying uh, good job, good job yeah. on the boot. Cause I, I mean, you did most of the work. I just kind of threw the ideas out there and it, it ended up being a really awesome boot. Well, I think that's the important thing. You came with the, the initial comments of, let's just take this boot to make it barefoot. And right. that was the most, one of the most important decisions. Um, obviously you came with the, the outsole design and then we just used, you know, our manufacturing or what we can do at the, at yeah. the factory to put this, put this boot together. But yeah, as you said, the only, you, this boot is just, it's really versatile. I mean, you yeah, can hark in it, you can walk to the shops. The only reason I'm not wearing my barefoot today is because I plan on flying home in them. <laughs> so I don't want, them, yeah. in case it snows again or yeah. something like that and they get really drenched and wet, I don't want to have wet uh, shoes in the plane because I fly in them, they're really wide yeah. fitting. When my feet swell up, normally in a pair of uh, sneakers, I, I can't even lace them up. I can't mm. get my foot back into them. But now I'm just, you know, I wear my barefoot boots on the airport and I don't feel any pain or anything like that. So, yeah. But yeah, I think one of the biggest debate would be you know sh sh do you put the insole in or not right personally i don't wear insole at first it was it was quite hard and firm mm -hmm. not have not having worn barefoot boots before yeah but now it's just actually actually don't sometimes i don't even wear socks oh, so really? i've taken the barefoot boots on two big uh sort of safaris mm. so the one of them you might have watched it where we yeah went i've seen that on one a, on a three-day hike and yeah. I had a big backpack and that's we crazy. went through the Infolozi and that was yeah that was amazing. Boots performed really well. One of my first longer hikes in them, so my my calves did, my calves did take a <laughs> bit of pain, no, take a bit of strain, and that was just from you know having a, a backpack and going yeah pretty much straight into barefoot boots. And then the next one were actually out in uh, Botswana, and then the one just one day we did about twelve miles. Oh my gosh! Uh, barefoot and obviously Botswana and the Okavanga Delta's got lots of water and one of the bigger biggest benefits was it's so easy to take them on and off yeah everyone else was sitting around me tying their shoelaces taking socks off as i was you know in and out yeah yeah that's so cool and yeah. like the thing is 
there's so many brands out there that are, that will be like, oh yeah, we make the toughest boots in the world, and 99% of their boots never actually see the hard terrain that people that they're intended for. And I think that's what, one cool thing about what you guys do is like these boots are actually designed for the purpose that they're or for like the African Rangers and for like the hard work that people are going to be doing in them. And they still reflect that when you buy them as a casual person that just wants to have them as a travel boot to yeah. hop on the airplane and stuff. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to, especially when these, the new colors get in as well. Who, so who does, who actually designed the pattern of the upper? Cause that's one thing that you guys do. That's really different from other brands and like something we'll probably talk about in the next video yeah. too, is like your patterns are, <laughs> your patterns are very distinctly Jim green patterns. Like I could point out a Jim green boot from half a mile away. I'd be like, Oh yeah, that's a Jim green boot. Yeah, so I put that pattern together. So you designed uh, one that of pattern? the biggest things, yeah, you know, one of the biggest things we did here was dropping this, uh, dropping the heel, the collar. Uh, that just made it more of like a sneaker. Yeah. And lots of people email me like, "This is actually a sneaker boot." Yeah. And I think just dropping that collar makes a huge difference because as soon as that comes up a little bit on the, up the calf there, all of a sudden it's a whole new experience and breaking, breaking okay. process. Yeah. And you can probably see. You know, if, so how we actually put how I put this Numzan boot together was that I took the the facing from this African Ranger, ran it down this boot. Oh, okay. I took the single piece vamp from the Razorback, and I was like, how mm. do you put these two together and make a formal boot? Oh wow! So that's so uh, all I wanted was that single piece vamp to run around here, and then to get that kind of unique facing from the African Ranger, and then we just had so many requests for a toe cap boot. So yeah. Then the next biggest thing here was that, you know, what, because this boot's fully leather lined. So we've got okay. calfskin lining, then we've got this veg retan uh, leather upper, plus we've got a genuine uh, toe cap. So there's actually three layers of leather on, oh, wow. on the toe here. Some people pick this up and I think it's a, a steel toe cap. Oh, boot. really? Yeah. And that, was, that was another thing we were going to talk about too was like the steel steel toe Correct. when it comes to like some of these barefoot boots what was what's, what's your thoughts on that and like what, what was it that because you know because you're like you're the one that was like hey we should talk a little bit about this but so i don't even really know what it is that you had in mind about talking about it so, so yeah so what what happened was that obviously we came out with this boot and guys were loving it and uh, through our custom-made boot department, lots of people are requesting steel toe cap boots. And if you just do a quick Google on steel toe cap barefoot boots, you know, you're looking at 300, 400, 500, up to mm. like $700 okay. boots. And that's just crazy. So especially when we get when I get back home now, we're going to uh, get a sample done up. One of the big things with steel toe caps is getting them uh, ASTM approved. Right. So we'll send that out to... The testing labs get them approved and then hopefully get a few pairs uh, over here to the US. So can you make a steel toe cap that's wide enough and big enough to get all the benefits of like the wide toe box that you guys have? Yeah. So really? we so back home our main industry is actually steel toe cap boots. Oh yeah, that's right. I remember you saying that. <laughs> so yeah, so So you're like yeah, you're like, oh yeah, that's what we do. Yeah, that's like our game. Yeah. <laughs> so, okay. So we've got a wide it's not it's not gonna fit this exact same last, mm. but it fits the, our steel toe is built to fit the same last as our um, STC last, which is the one we run on our African the standard African Ranger. Okay. And then on some of our Philly Philly boots. So mm. it's already very uh, quite a wide um quite a wide toe box there. yeah i think people are gonna love that because yeah. that's that's a something we hear all the time is like people are like hey do you know any wide toe box like steel toe boots or composite toe boots because so many of the american brands and people that are buying them in, in america are like they're all the really narrow toe box yeah. boots that are made in the u.s and so the steel toes reflect that and so you can it's so hard to find a really comfortable yeah. like steel toe boot so i mean it could be wider but then, you know, to go and find now to tool up again for, for steel, right. why the steel toe cap will be, would be quite a story. So we will, we'll, you know, I don't know how many pairs we'll start off with. Yeah. I uh, just see how it goes, see what the guys say, but we have made one or two samples and so far the guys cool. do enjoy them. Yeah. So it's been, yeah. A little this journey. this <laughs> was the first, was this the first boot that you came out with, with a leather insole or midsole too? Uh, we had the that Bayabab boot, which oh, right. looks fairly similar to this boot, uh, right. which had a leather lasting board. Mm -hmm. And that was the only boot that we had that had some kind of leather in the midsole. Right. Whereas this is the first just pure 
you know, it's obviously a, the, the single single last of boot. Well, that, that's that, going back to what you were saying about like the the thin insole versus no insole. These ones I can't run an insole in, mm -hmm. and the first few days, maybe the first week, I was like, oh, these are a little bit hard underfoot. But really, once once they are broken in and once they start shaping to the shape of your foot, and I think once your feet get used to it, I honestly. I don't really feel any pressure points like I used to just from that really hard layer of, of leather yeah. underneath your foot. Like they're pretty comfortable. Yeah, I mean at, at this trade show now, I wore them for four days straight. And any, I mean standing anywhere for four days straight, selling yeah. shoes, you know, your feet are going to get tired. And my feet did by the end of each day were a little bit tired. But the best thing was when you when I wake up in the morning, it was as if I hadn't done anything the day before. Oh wow. So I think in terms of how your feet can recover yeah. and the recovery period was definitely a lot faster. Cool. Yeah, but for four days straight, I was uh, wearing the barefoot. Yeah, cause, cause that's about as hard of a test as you can get because it's, it's standing is even different than like walking or working. Like it's, uh, yeah. to me, it's harder on your feet to just stand all day than it is to be like doing yeah. manual labor well, or like hiking. Well, crouching as well, because we had to yeah. you know, you know, get the boots onto feet and seeing fit and feel. Yeah. That's so crazy. I, I miss doing trade shows sometimes, but then other days I'm like, I'm so glad I don't have to do trade shows as much <laughs> as I used to. There's so much work. So what, is the, so what does the future look like for this, this collaboration boot that we've worked on that we weren't so sure was going to be a success and then all of yeah. a sudden became this huge success? So, yeah, obviously people, I mean, the, the feedback we're getting is, you know, some of the best we've ever got. Yeah. Uh, obviously word of mouth now because since the boots became in stock, we sent, other than the pre-sales, we sent... Uh, a few more extra boots over uh, you know the sales are starting to pick up a bit more so naturally we decided that we're going to add a few more colors to the range okay so, uh, I'm not sure by the time this video goes out maybe they'll be in stock I'm not I'm not sure but we okay can maybe line it up yeah we'll uh, put we'll put graphics on screen when we yeah. figure out the dates and we'll put links below as well yeah so I think the one I'm most excited about for the the barefoot for the African range of barefoot is definitely the veg retan yeah this boot because We've got the new bucks, which are going to be in the fudge, the, the brown, then we've got the black and green coming. And then in the veg retans, we've got the walnuts and the natural. And I think that's going to be a really, really nice addition to, you know, the guys that do like the barefoot boots to their range. Because obviously the, the veg retans got slightly better water resistant properties. Okay. Wouldn't say the boot is water resistant or waterproof, right. but you know, it's going to age differently. It's going to look a little bit different. So, so slightly, I would say maybe a smarter leather as well that you yeah. can maybe dress up. So, Cool. That's exciting. Yeah. yeah thanks again for, because, you know, sometimes these collaborations are the collaborations where I'm like, all right, let me get in there. I'm going to change everything. And then I'm going to design this thing from the ground up. And then other collaborations, you kind of just are like, you do this better than me. I'm just going to let the chef cook, you know? And I was like, and that's what this was. I was like, Hey, I think the outsole should be about like this. And here's a pattern idea. Here's what I think the sole construction could look like. And so it, it is a little bit, it's, it's almost like not a collaboration in the same degree. And so I appreciate you letting me hop aboard and like be a part of this because you could have done it without me pretty easily. You know, obviously we have the, the channel and everything, yeah. but I, I'm super appreciative to just have my name attached to it because it is a very unique boot. It feels good. It, it looks good. I, I um, yeah, I'm just really appreciative that you let me no, be a part of it. Yeah, well, it's good to, good to have you on on board with it as well. Plus, we get to go to the jazz. <laughs> yeah, we get to go, we go to the, the jazz, jazz game yeah, tonight. Exactly. We go get some food. Yeah. And honestly, that's uh, that's half of what these collaborations are to me. It's like, yeah, they make good money and they're fun, and it like we get to work with some cool brands. But like, it's just fun working with people that I want to work with that are passionate about the same mm -hmm. stuff that I am. And that are, have a similar goal in mind because you get to a point where you're just like oh like works just work and i want to work with like cool people i want to enjoy my work if i'm going to be doing this for 40 to 50 hours a week i want like my employees to be like people i want to hang out with i want the people that i work with and collaborate with to be like the people that i actually want to spend time with and uh yeah so that's pretty much I, it i don't know i think I just, the best thing about this collaboration boot is that would we have done it probably not right and the best thing on top of that is that i think the people that are or the customers that are using this boot they probably they, they're definitely thanking us because there's actually i was chatting with my distribution team and there's nothing really out there like this right we're kind of the first to the market on a 
low cut, very versatile, resolable, rugged, yeah. all leather midsole, stitched on construction barefoot boots. Yeah. You know, there's lots of, and you know, there obviously are other great barefoot boots, but you know, there's nothing quite, quite like this one. It's so. really cool too, seeing like other like, cause there's like this, the whole community of the barefoot world. And like, there's people independently making videos of this that have no idea who I am or how I was attached <laughs> to it. Like they're just talking completely independently as a, a barefoot world reviewer of these boots. And so it's, it's really cool how well it's, it's being picked up by those guys too. Cause those barefoot guys can be very particular. They very, can be like, mm, very like, crucial. if it's one millimeter off, <laughs> I'm not wearing it, you know? <laughs> And it's, it seems like it's just blowing up with a lot of those people. And so, yeah. So thanks for coming out to Salt Lake. We're about to record what uh, the next little project we have in the works. But we don't know when that's happening. So we're going to separate it into a couple of different videos. Yeah. So stay tuned for that video well, that's, that's going to be coming out. We haven't even discussed that. So yeah. that's going to be... So, and maybe, and maybe we'll put a couple of teasers in here by the time this releases, but for, for the most part, you're going to have to wait to the next video when it releases that we're recording in about 30 seconds to really see the next project that me and Gareth are working on. So thank you for coming out again, um, flying all the way to, to Salt Lake just to come visit us, solely to come visit us. Had nothing else to do with coming and seeing the Jazz or Park City or anything. Yeah. It's I know it was all because you want to be best friends with me. You want to <laughs> yeah. eventually move to Salt Lake so we could be friends forever. I do enjoy enjoy it, yeah. <laughs> it is it's fun, just huh? the cold. I need to adjust to the cold. It's just... It gets pretty bitter. You came on the, the right day because, what was it, Taylor? Two days ago, it was like 15 degrees outside all day. Blizzard. Yeah, yeah, it was miserable. You got, a, you got like one of the only sunny days we get in so that January. That's a beautiful day. Yeah. So thanks for coming. We'll see you guys later. Yeah.